Hello, everybody. <laughs> How are you doing? Welcome to yet another episode of Renegade Direct. Today, we're going to be watching Cowboy Bebop Season 1, Episode 11, Toys in the Attic. Ooh, ominous. So, yeah. so here's the thing about this episode in specific. Mm-hmm. This one threw me for a loop when I first saw it. I did not really know what to expect because... Aerosmith? You know, and I don't want to miss a thing. I mean, toys in the attic, you know. Oh, yeah, yeah. Well, it's better than loving an elevator. Because, honestly, I don't think the Bebop even has an elevator. Or, no, it, actually, maybe it does. I don't know. Hmm. Damn. I would imagine it does. Now I'm going to Google to see if the, the Bebop has an elevator. Because <laughs> hmm. that'd be interesting. But, okay. Needless to say, this episode, for a lot of people, is one that they consider the most, what the hell... Because cool. of, because just it's because for we didn't actually watch the preview to this the last time because we haven't been really watching the previews right. because I wanted you all to experience this as raw as possible. I like that better. And I honestly don't think that I, I honestly don't think that. Well, okay. When I first watched because me when I was a kid I watched all the previews to the next episode because I was wanting more. It's like I want more of this in my eyeballs right now. Why aren't I getting it right now? But. Needless to say, I think with this episode, I really didn't know what the hell to expect because it's this is this is really what made to me it made the most sense seeing this as an anthology series. This this is one of those things that really just makes you go, huh? You know, in the grand scheme of things, damn, this actually works. But I'm not gonna say any more. I'm just going to let you all enjoy this. That's why I haven't said anything about it. Yeah, yeah. So, anyway, ladies and gentlemen, here we go. Three, two, one. Get it. Space travel log 0968. Empty time. It sounds good to call bounty hunting freelance work, but all that really means is that we're self-employed. So when there's no one to hunt, we have nothing. But when you're out of money, you start thinking about quick cash. You're fine with both of these now, right? You're going with even? No, make it odd. <laughs> Odd, you're sure? Snake eyes, even. Oh no! <laughs> <laughs> Fell off the pipe and just. Need anymore. Well, Jet. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I can and respect that's it. I told you not to play against her. <laughs> <laughs> Those that try to get rich quick, or live at the expense of others. All get divine retribution somewhere along the line. I don't remember that. The refrigerator way back here. Survival of the fittest is the law of nature. We deceive or we are deceived. Thus we flourish or perish. Nothing good ever happened to me when I trusted others. That is the lesson. How much did you swindle? A word like that could damage my reputation. He just had a run of bad luck. You just didn't know about this. Uh. <laughs> That's part of the Bitch. Story. You're just a hustler. That's all. I mean, she hey, is. I can respect the hustle, but at the same time, damn, you really gotta resort to that? Hey, what happened? Something bit me. Oh, Ooh, shit. He knows what's up. It wasn't a rat, okay? Look at this. There's a weird mark on the back of my neck. Are you sure this is gonna work? It works on everything but nearsightedness and cavities. <laughs> it's a vampire. Yeah, sure. Don't you have any real a vampire. medicine just with sores and wounds? Vampire. That would be this. A vampire. Boil it in three cups of water, and when it turns green and goopy, you drink it. Ew. Mm. Hey, old Chinese remedies work Isn't sometimes. Something more, you know, I mean, different. ginseng's a friggin' miracle yeah, drug, dude. It. Yeah, give me that. Mm. Oh. Great. 
Numb, numb. Sicker than I did before. What is that awful smell? Herbal medicine. Your upper lip. Herbal hmm. medicine. <laughs> Hold your nose and hope for the best. Oh, brother. Oh, come on. Can you quit joking around? Huh? Hmm. I have no clue. He's got some kind of poison that's not on the database. Cholera. Uh. No, it's not that. Uh. Ebola virus. Yeah, that's a no. big one nowadays. A mystery space creature. Huh? Spooky! The attack of the horrible alien. <laughs> well, yeah. Well, that is possible, I suppose. Oh yeah, right. And what is yeah. it? Yeah, that's... Ed has never seen this before. Hmm. So what else could it be but a horrible alien, huh? What? <laughs> Maybe it's something like a rat went through a mutation and it evolved. Right up there with Ed's theory that it's a horrible alien. Really pitiful. Ah yeah. What are we gonna do, Ein? You believe it's a horrible alien, don't you? <laughs> 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 You know, I always have a fear of getting broken into or getting attacked while I'm in it. They call it the psycho, the psycho fear. I'd still fight you naked, covered in suds. Fuck it. I would. I would. It's just, it's just. We're taking a shit. Defense. One neck or the other. On when I start helicoptering it out. Yeah. <laughs> no, nah, they'll just cut it off and then show it up your ass. Beware of my technique. <laughs> Beware of the, be the windmill blade. Creatures. Why did it have to be this way? I still have a lot to live for. I haven't committed any crimes, at least no really bad ones. <laughs> <laughs> I'm still young and full of life. Full of what? Well, yeah, that's... Typical human. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Poor yeah. me. <laughs> That's a weird lesson. No, probably not a good one. That's not a good one. Where are you? Are you here, Mr. Spooky Space Creature? Exploration, Dang it, Ed. No. Where's Ed? I can't believe they got you. Where are your animal instincts? Huh? There you go. No. Oh. Oh. That's gotta hurt. It was like flubber. <laughs> He's ready for war, dude. <laughs> is that a rapier? <laughs> no, it's it's a skewer. Okay. He's still eating that terrible food he made. To land on Mars. The route cannot be changed once it is confirmed. Uh, it's like the scanner from Alien. That's exactly what I was thinking. Dallas. Dallas, it's a, it's right behind you. Dallas! Game over, man! Dropped his cigarettes. That's the worst. <clears throat> <laughs> well, <laughs> shit. Didn't think that one through long enough. He's like going back in for him. <laughs> I would have done the same thing. Ooh. Oh, we caught it. Oh, <laughs> 
<laughs> I just keep frying the bastard. At least he double tapped it. This thing smells kind of familiar. Huh? One year ago, I had gotten hold of a real Ganymede rock lobster. I hid it in the fridge in the stockroom so no one else would eat it. So it was a lobster? Oh, hell. Yeah. You better close that, bud. <laughs> Somebody else think that's fucking hilarious? Yeah, it's pretty funny. <laughs> leaving shit, well, leaving shit in the fridge is no joke, dude. Oh, yeah, that's the way it looked was absurd. No time for caution, Spike. There you go. Come the prey. <laughs> so that's the end of the entire series. That's how the series ends. No, yes, that's exactly what I thought too. <laughs> and then that would suck. <laughs> yeah. No. <laughs> wow. Everybody dies at the end. Well, some... okay. A little bit of a little bit of a synopsis on the creation of this episode. Watanabe realizing that this is an anthology series that he will have to fill out a total of twenty six episodes. He knew he could throw some oddballs in there that would really leave people scratching their heads, and he wanted to pay homage to one of his favorite films of all time, Alien. Mm. He wanted to pay homage it's to appropriate it. that I brought that poster over yeah, here before exactly. this episode. It's awesome that you brought that down here because I was just thinking about it and I'm like, that's gonna actually come in handy for this episode. Yeah. But but anyway, he he paid homage to it in so many ways. With the cre you know, with the creature at first not seeing what it looks like and also uh also uh the uh the tracker, the flamethrower, uh the uh also, uh, the heat vision and all that, and all this, uh, the heat vision is actually a little bit of a tribute to Predator as well, yeah, because that's that. the predominant thing, uh, how it hunts in the, in the series. Right. So, anyway, the alien, uh, anyway, uh, what you saw here is effectively his homage, uh, and sort of, sort of little, uh, little nod to the, to the fans saying, saying, yeah, this is, this is, but uh, this is just a a thing that I wanted to try out and have fun with. Yeah, and that's that's basically it. And everyone was left so dumbfounded by this episode. I mean, so I was when I first saw this. I was like, "Really? That's how you're ending it?" And then I saw there was a preview for the next episode. I'm like, "Oh, thank God!" Mm -hmm. <laughs> no, because really, if that's how they ended it, I would have at first been disappointed. But in all honesty, I'd have probably respected Watanabe just be like. The ball's on you, man. <laughs> Jesus, wait! What a way to end it. <laughs> like honestly, yeah. it honestly, Ke Kevin Smith, one of my favorite uh, storytellers <laughs> of all time. Uh, he said he said uh, the same thing about the Hobbit films because the Hobbit film or not the Hobbit film, but Lord of the Rings. He said if Lord of the Rings, you know, went through all this stuff and all this, you know, Peter, you know, he's like Peter Jackson. You know, he's a better filmmaker than me. All you know, always will be. But if they would have gone through all this and then at the very end. Uh, at the very end of uh, the third film, it's just a big Sam Frodo fuck fest right there in the middle of the in in Rivendell. Oh my god! I would have just given Peter Jackson the Oscar just for balls alone. Because <laughs> could you have imagined the shock of everybody in the theater? <laughs> like all of a sudden, just like like 
Wait, what? What? Mm-hmm. No! Oh my god! Oh my god! I've heard the children's eyes! What the hell? We're watching <laughs> Bruno. What? <laughs> ich bin Bruno. Very funny movie. Yes. Doesn't get enough respect. Oh. I, t- I gave him a traditional African name. What name did you give him? OJ. Such a savage movie. <laughs> Sasha Baron Cohen doesn't care, dude. I mean, no, he does it's not. It's people like that that honestly make me. Like, and make obviously, me laugh. neither do the people who put this together. Yeah. Well, yeah, this episode right here is what made me realize <coughs> they don't yeah, give it, a fuck. This truly cements it as an anthology because every other story you could see it uh, tying together in some way, but this is completely out of left field. Mm-hmm. You never would have expected. I never expected this. I never would have expected that ending either. I'd expected, you know, Spike. Pins it to the wall, burns it, contains it, and that's that. Gets a sample, right. Get, figures out a yeah, cure or whatever it yeah, is. Yeah, gets a sample, figures out a cure. Guess we're just left to figure out that, I guess, uh, it wasn't really deadly. It's just going to make them sick for a while. Yeah. yeah. It's, and it made Ed just like, oh, I ate something. Yeah, Ed's just like, Ed's pudding. Just like oh, pudding. <laughs> just like, Ed, Ed nom, must nom. have eaten a lot of garbage in her time on whatever. Well, you she know. lived on Earth. Yeah. I mean, that's... that Whatever that, ruins she was in. Yeah, that's Earth. pretty much garbage alone. Yeah. <laughs> well, in this in this continuum, in continuum yes, it is. It's a rock Earth shower. Is, Earth is pretty all. much a rock shower haven. That's it. People live underground and eat. And I guarantee you, they a lot of them probably eat rats. They probably kill the rats, strip them of their skin, and cook them. And they're just like, they're just like, eh. Pudding. Pudding. <laughs> Nice rat pudding. Yeah. Well, actually, rat rat hold or hold. actually, that, that ties that ties into Demolition Man as well because Demolition Man, uh, he uh, Sylvester Stallone the entire movie has not had a hamburger because in the future hamburgers are illegal because oh red meat's bad for you and whatever's bad for you is illegal. Uh, he goes underground to try and find this guy that the that some criminals are looking for and he comes across he's like. And then he grabs a burger and he and he pays for the burger and he <clears> eats <throat> it and he's like, oh god, oh god, thank you, thank you, this is, this is just amazing. And then S- Sandra Bullock's just like comes to a logical, you know, makes him realize the logical situation he's in, and she's like, she's like, um, do you see any cows around here? And and he's like, what do you mean? And she's just <laughs> like, she's just like, ask her, ask her, ask the woman cooking where the uh, where the burger comes from. And he asks the bird, the woman who's who speaks Spanish, and she goes, she goes, she goes, it's rata, rata. It's like he's like, this is rat. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta be honest, it's the best best rat I've ever eaten. <laughs> Just keeps eating it. Because honestly, at that point, I mean, when you're living underground and meat is a very scarce source, I mean, yeah. It I mean, tastes good and it's well done. Who the fuck cares? Yeah. Exactly. If you enjoy it, enjoy it. If it gives you a stomach ache later, just be like, ah, it's kind of fucked up, but it tasted good. It's still worth it. No, nah, when you have it. a stomach ache from eating something, you're like, fuck, I never want to eat anything again. Right. All food is true, terrible. True, true, true. My true. body feels like a nightmare Dude, right Dude, I now. used to get horrible stomach aches from drinking milkshakes, though. Every time I would, I would be like, I'm drinking another milkshake. And then, like, three days later, I'd be like, <laughs> yeah. Fuck yeah! The well, well, to amazing. me, to me, uh, they are. Uh, to me, it was uh, this barbecue sauce that my stepdad used to use. It was this very thick, like Worcestershire sauce, mm. and it was just like, and it was, and it was good. But every time I ate it, my stomach was just, my stomach was just like, "Fuck you!" In your whole entire life, and I'm like, fuck "What?" Your entire fucking <gasps> life to- oh! <laughs> Next thing you know, I was in the bathroom, just like, "I'm never eating his barbecued ribs." Ever again. <laughs> Week later, I'm out Rocket there again man. devouring like devo- <laughs> exactly. Uh, but anyway, I'm out there again a week later, and I'm I'm eating those ribs. And I always ask him, be like, can you please lay off the Worcestershire sauce a little bit. Just you know, give me like a a good like steak rub or something on it. You know, good blackening. I mean, or heck, just dab some A one on there. And he actually like turned around, slammed like slammed his beer down on the table. He's like, you expect me to serve A one on these motherfuckers? And I'm like. Okay, fair point. Because uh, he's like he likes he likes being the the pit master. That's just who he is. He he once smoked pork ribs for I think no actually it was like eight or nine hours just to get them perfect, and they were. 
They were. It's the best ribs I've ever eaten in my entire life. Mm. Oh, yeah. God, now well, I'm hungry. One more thing about the episode. I don't want to overhype anything. I don't want to give away too much. I just want to say, that's one of my favorite horror movies of all time. Yes. That's definitely one of my favorite episodes of yeah. the series. Well, you were cackling but the whole time. But this is still not my favorite creepy episode of the series. That's right. I know the one you're talking about. I can't wait for that That's one. That's the either. one I was hoping this was. But no, not, but no, that one's, this that is one's still very good. Well, no, that one's like I Walking think in like the, the sec uh, the second phase, which is uh, the next two episodes are what is considered the last of the first phase. Hmm. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, because it's basically halfway point. Almost. Yeah, it's it is actually yeah two episodes from now is the halfway point on this, and honestly, we have to watch those two together because if yeah. we watch the first one now, y'all will be pissed. Because you'll just be like, I don't want to stay here for another one. But God dang it, I want to know what happens. Yeah, that's cool. <laughs> yeah, because that's how I was. Wow. Thanks for spoiling the next fucking season of JoJo's Bizarre Adventure for me, Google, you fucking assholes. Really? What the fuck? Oh, Google. Fuck just, yourself. Google, oh, Google just effed him over, guys. Google just effed him over. Don't use the app. Google app because apparently they'll spoil fucking anime for you. Mmm. And another news to forget today. I saw that before next before I watched the next It's series. like every time I'm trying to watch a wrestling pay-per-view and I'm not watching it right when it's happening. Yeah. Everything gets spoiled. Well, there are only several pay-per-views I really care about. Yeah, at this point I don't care about many of them. Honestly, WWE all. just needs to cut back and do only like 6 a year and just do uh, just do uh, just do like super shows for uh, for other countries. They need to go to Tokyo and let Shinsuke Nakamura win the belt. I, they need to do a lot of things, but it's not my job to decide shit for them. No, I know so. it isn't. Fuck we em. can only sit here and dream, but no. Vince McMahon will jerk off to power fantasies of Brock Lesnar dominating him <laughs> on the fucking wrestling floor. All right. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. We're uh, Me and Chad are big wrestling fans. It's true. Yeah, but overall, this episode... Did y'all expect it to go that way? Not at all. Uh, no. <laughs> That's the best kind. I love that shit. I love it when, when it comes completely out of left field and you don't expect it. Yeah. And still, though, I mean, Nick was cackling the whole time because because I think he knows that there's another episode after this. When I first watched this, I was just like, what the hell? No! No! And then, and then the new, the next episode thing rolled, and I'm just like, oh, th- yeah, okay, okay, we're good. We're still good. I would say, had you not told us how many episodes there were, I would have probably believed that as well. Yeah, yeah, that's, that's... I'm like, son of a bitch, well, that was good anyway. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, there's, yeah, 26 episodes, and this one is definitely probably one of the most out in left field. There's one coming up later. The other the one I'm thinking of one. is still not for a little while. I no, think. yeah, yeah. I think so. it's it's actually in the latter half, like last. At it was one of the ones I somehow episodes. caught like out of order, like when I was watching it. I don't remember exactly how, but like I like I said, I missed a lot of the show the first time I saw like the beginning of it. Yeah, and I think I caught that episode like next time I ended up catching some of it, and it was like way later on into them airing it. <clears throat> but um, I guess that's why I felt like it was an earlier one I saw. But, like when I saw that one, I was just like, "Dude, like it's a really cool one as well." Oh yeah, and I can't wait for them to see that. One. But the next two, we are gonna have to definitely watch those back to back because y'all like that. Those two to me, uh, it's the one that you and I keep talking about. It's the two parter that's yeah. kind of our favorite. Yeah, but definitely. Yeah. Anyway. Yeah, that was uh, Cowboy Bebop Season 1, Episode 11, Toys in the Attic. Uh, an homage to a lot of horror films and uh, science fiction films and all that. You notice how the uh, entire musical aspect of the show is almost kind of just completely missing in, uh, in exchange for like actual like horror music and stuff. Well, yeah, yeah. Ambi- it was mostly end. like ambient sounds and, uh, and like very creepy arrangements in a minor key. It's one of the things that just, can tip ooh. you off early that something's not quite the same with this episode. It's mm-hmm. just like the absence of One of, of these music. is not the same. Theme, yeah. One of these. Yeah, I, I get the feeling from that too. Sorry. There's a gnat. I'm just trying to... Kick his ass. <laughs> Kick his ass. Get... Beat his ass. Beat... Get it. Nail. <laughs> I saw a fish. Kick its ass. <clears throat> 
It's all burned and it was break. Why did you do that, Ron? You stupid fucking bitch. <laughs> Ron, why? <laughs> Becky, I don't have to explain anything. Stupid fucking bitch. <laughs> 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 okay, well, that's going to do it for this one, everybody. This was Cowboy Bebop Season 1, Episode 11, Toys in the Attic. Good God, what an episode. And, yeah, the next two are going to be awesome. I hope you all enjoy them. And I'm sure we will. I hope that everyone uh, hope that everyone enjoyed this. And if you want to watch the full version of this, if you're watching this on YouTube, there's a link to our Patreon right down there that will take you to uh, our, uh, will take you to our uh, page. And uh, you can watch this show that we're up to in its entirety. Or if you're watching this after we've completed it and you want to sign up, I mean, hey, all the, all 26 episodes will be right there whenever we get to them. So, until next time, signing off, I'm Nate. Andrew. I'm Chad. I'm Nick. And we will see you all in the next one. See you, Space Cowboy. What he said. <laughs>